Advanced Accounting 7C Investment in Common Stock Differential on the Equity Method. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. We're on Facebook. Here's the email address and the website. This is a very common question I get from accounting students in advanced accounting, and I thought I would put it in this blog and then go over on, go over it on video. Intercompany transfers, and intercompany transfers are a part of consolidations. So first of all, what's a consolidation? Well, it means that you combine the financial results of a parent company who's the buyer with a subsidiary company that sells part of itself. The parent buys the percentage of the subsidiary's equity, the value of the company, or assets minus liabilities. So at the end of the month of the year, everyone, creditors, shareholders, would like to see the combined results of the parent and the subsidiary. Now, what's important when you consolidate is you don't want to count any activities twice. And there's a risk of that if you do business between the parent and the subsidiary. That's an intercompany transaction. So we want to avoid the double counting by eliminating the intercompany transaction or, again, transactions between the parent and the sub. Now, it's not unusual that the parent and the sub would do business with each other. Good example here in St. Louis, we had uh, Anheuser-Busch, the beer maker, have a subsidiary that made bottles and cans. So bottle and can subsidiary made cans and sold them to the brewery so they could put beer in them. That seems to make perfect sense. One entity might be the supplier to another. That's what we saw in the example I just gave. Maybe the parent makes blue jeans and a subsidiary supplies the denim material. So the sub is selling denim to the parent. The sub is a supplier. Now, obviously we do this all to make a profit. So in my denim example, the subsidiary is selling the denim to the parent for a profit. However, if we're looking at the financials of the parent and sub together, we should eliminate the profit that the sub recognized on the sale to the parent in consolidation. So another way to think about it is the parent and the sub should only include transactions with outside third parties, not each other. So... If you're doing consolidation, you want to only count the third-party transactions. If you're considering the companies individually, the parents complete financials and the subsidiaries complete financials, you wouldn't eliminate anything, and you just have the financials as they are because you're not trying to consolidate. Now, a big confusion with intercompany is upstream versus downstream. Upstream is when sub sells to the parent. Downstream is when parent, the bigger company, sells to the sub. But the accounting, for the most part, is the same whichever direction you're going, whether it's parent to sub, downstream, sub to parent, upstream. The accounting is pretty much the same. So the next point I make in blue is what gets eliminated in consolidation? And go back to that subsidiary selling denim to the parent again. Well, the problem is, is that the subsidiary booked a profit, the difference between their cost and the selling price to the parent. Well, that profit should be eliminated if we're going to consolidate. Now, what about the parent? The parent bought the denim. They paid, paid a retail price for the denim. So in consolidation, if you're going to eliminate the profit, you should also eliminate that larger cost that the parent paid for the denim. In other words, the parent in consolidation should put, book that denim purchase at the subsidiary's cost. So in other words, in consolidation only, the denim gets sold to the parent without any profit. So... The inventory account where the parent bought the denim and posted it would be at the subsidiary's cost. So let's go a little further and think about selling inventory for a gain. I'm going to go down here a little further. Let's say parent jeans buys 80% of sturdy denim, a subsidiary. 
Sturdy supplies denim to the parent. And now we bring up a new term called the non-controlling interest. If parent bought 80% of sturdy denim, someone else, maybe it could be an individual or a group of people, owns the other 20%. The parent, since they bought 80%, is the controlling interest. Somebody else is a non-controlling interest, an NCI, and we'll see that impact later on. So let's say that, Dena, that Sturdy sells $1,000 in Denim to the parent, and their profit is 20% or $200, and let's consider what needs to be eliminated. Well, we already learned that the profit should be eliminated on the transaction. In this case, in consolidation only, sturdy, the sub's profit is overstated by $200, the amount of the profit they made when they sold it to the parent. And the other thing I just mentioned is, is not only is the subsidiary's, the seller's profit overstated, but the buyer, the parent's inventory is overstated. So the value of the inventory on the parent's books is $200 too high. So the adjusting entry just in consolidation, I keep saying that because we're only talking about for consolidation purposes is, we debit to reduce the net income of sturdy by $200 and we credit to reduce the inflated or the inventory that was too high on the parents' books and that's what we do to eliminate the intercompany sale of inventory. And I make this final point that the elimination entry would be the same whether it's an upstream or a downstream sale, we want to eliminate the profit and eliminate that higher inventory cost. That's as far as we're going to get on this intercompany subject. Remember that the book Cost Accounting for Dummies is now available on Amazon. And if you look at my page or my website, we teach the Cost Accounting for Dummies book in a free online course each Saturday. We also have our toughest accounting topics, which are small group classes that meet on the tougher accounting topics that students have trouble with. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.